Hi, right, students. Logan Phillips here. All right, today we're going to be talking about Microsoft Excel, and we're going to be getting into the uh, software, the programs, and whatnot. So let's go in and look at Microsoft Excel. We're going to start off going into our Blackboard website, and this is going to be a walkthrough of one of our guided projects. Now, remember that all of our lectures can be found on our Blackboard website in the left-hand side called Lectures. So if you're needing any help with the guided projects, those type of items, they can be found right here. Now, I'm going to go ahead and jump into the SimNet environment. Uh, you can do this by following the SimNet link on the left-hand side, and it should bring you to something that looks like this. Now, from here in SimNet, we're going to be working on the guided projects. I've already done a video for 1-2, so let's go ahead and go on the left-hand side to projects. And we're going to find guided project, uh, let's see, 2-3. All right, so this is Microsoft Excel Chapter 2's guided project. Now, I'll walk you through this video step by step, how to achieve the assignment, how to do the steps, and that way you can go into your independent project and do them yourselves without a whole lot of trouble. Now, to start off with, on the left-hand side of the screen, we have two files that we need to download. Now, I'm using Microsoft Office for uh, 2016. You can use Office 2013. It will work the same. Uh, some of the commands might be a little different, but it will work. And you can use Microsoft or Office Mac 2016. Now, any of my classes, you cannot use Mac 2011 or older. The commands are completely different. So we're going to need to download our instruction file and our start file. So let's go ahead and download the instruction file first and open it up. And then let's go ahead and download our start file and open it up as well. Now the instruction file will come in as a PDF. You can download this, open it, print it, whatever you want. Um, I am running two screens, so my instruction file will be on the screen you cannot see. I do suggest printing this off. I will call out the steps we're on as we're working through the project, and uh, you can follow along that way. So we have our instruction file set up, and we have our start file. It should look something like this. We're working on the Sierra Pacific Community College District Finance Office document. Now, with anything we download from online, the very first step we need to do is can click the Enable Editing button. Now, what you should see at the very top of your screen is your name and Sierra Pacific-02. If you don't see that, you may have encountered a glitch, and you need to download that document from online uh, a second time to see if it can give you your name. That way it will be digitally signed to you. So for this project, we're going to be covering some different skill sets. We're going to be naming some cell ranges. We're going to create and copy formulas. We're going to set the mathematical order of operations. We're going to use some absolute reference, so locking places or locking our formulas to certain locations. We're going to insert a current date as a function. We're going to use the PMT or payment function. We're going to audit some formulas, and we're going to use the sum if and sum product formulas. So we're going to do some mathematics here that is specific for finance. Uh, this is great for using things like mortgage calculators, uh, doing your financial analysis of your own income, uh, balances and budgets and schedules and those type of items. So step one, we need to save this document. I always save it to my document or to my desktop. So I'm going to go File. In my Backstage view, choose Save As. I'm going to choose Desktop. And I'm going to leave the name the exactly the same and I'm going to save it to my desktop. Now, the reason I do this is because it makes it a lot easier for me to deal with the document when I'm uploading it back into the SimNet environment. So we've done step one. We've saved the document. We got our very first initial, and we can see two different tabs we're working with. We're working with the Student Loan tab and the Fees and Credit tab. You can see those down below. So we have Fees and Credit with some uh, spreadsheet, and we have some Student Loan here. It looks like we're going to be creating some payments, beginning balance. So it looks like it's going to be an amortization schedule to me. So let's see what we can uh, accomplish here. So we're going on to Step 2, and on the Student Loan sheet, we're going to select the cells B5 through C8. So I'm going to jump straight to the cell B5 using the address bar. So we've got B5 through cell C8. So let's go over here to C, and we're going to go through 8. Now, I accomplish this with just a left click and hold and drag to it. Now, we're going to click the Create Form Selection button, which is on the Formulas tab in the Define Names group. So let's go ahead in the Formulas tab. We have this Define Names group, and we're going to create a form selection here. So with this form selection, our information is on the left-hand side. So we've got left-hand column selected, and we're going to hit OK. Now, next we're going to select 
excuse me. Now, the reason we're doing this is because we now have a name manager system set up uh, because we selected that area. If here, if you look on the formulas tab in the define names grouping and you code in the name manager, you can see loan amount, loan term, rate, and payment are now set up. Loan amount, loan term, payment, and rate. So we can actually use these names in our formulas in other locations instead of having to type in cell, uh, student loan for a worksheet, uh, cell C5, blah, blah, blah. So this name manager really allows us to reference specific names instead of just specific locations. All right, so next step, we're going to select the ranges of E5 through F7. So let's go here to E5. Now I'm going to use my shift and arrows in here, and we're going to go to F7. And with this selected, we're going to repeat the steps to name these. So we're going to create a form from the selection. Now again, it's the left-hand column. If you have top row selected, make sure you unselect it and hit OK. And if we open up our name manager, we should see total interest, total principal, and total cost now total cost, total interest, and total principal. Now again, all this does is allow us to reference this information. So instead of typing in student loan, uh, comma, colon, question mark, C5, we can now just type the word payment, or rate, or loan terms, and it will reference this specific worksheet and work cell. All right, so let's go ahead and close that out again. So now we're going to go to cell C8. So I'm going to jump straight to it using our address bar. You can see here that is on column C, row 8. And we're going to type in a payment function here. So we're going to go up into our financial button on our formulas tab. And we're going to go, so we're on our formulas tab. We're going to go to financials. And we're going to choose the PMT function. So here we're going to have rate, imper, PV, FV, and type. So let's open this up, and we can see here there's a little bit of information here. So rate is the interest rate for the period. Uh, this is, imper is the total number of payments for the period. So if you have a 30-year loan, 12 payments apiece, you know, start adding them up. PV is the present value, the value as it sets right now. FV is the future value. And type is the logical value payment at the beginning of the period, one payment at the end of the period, zero, or it can be just omitted. So let's go ahead and click on rate. <clears throat> and we're going to click on cell C7 once we're in the rate box. So let's go up here to C to 7, and our rate is 4.5. Now notice that rate became rate uh, because we've named that using our forms. Now next we're going to click on... And we're going to divide this by 12. So our rate divided by 12 months. So though it's 4.5% a year, it's actually 0 0.00375 on any given month. And next, we're going to click on cell M per box. And we're going to click on cell C6. And again, what should happen here is it will type in the term loan term instead of cell C6. And you can see loan underscore or term. And the loan term is then going to be multiplied times 12. So let's put our asterisk and the number is 12. You can see our loan term is 60 periods. Okay, we are now on step 3F. And we just now going on to step 3G. And in the PV box, our present value box, we're going to hit the minus sign. And so our present value is a negative value. We owe money on this. And because it's a loan, we've borrowed against it. And we're going to select cell C5. And so we're going to come up here, and it should type in the information loan amount. So our loan amount, now this is a big thing that usually screws student up. If the present value is a positive, then you leave it as a positive number. If it is a negative, like you owe somebody money, you're going to have to put that negative symbol first. So don't forget the negative symbol there. So that's the difference of maybe depreciating a value. Like say you own a tractor and you're depreciating it over five years. Your tractor has a present value of $5,000. So you would leave it as a positive $5,000. But if you take out a loan for $10,000, you owe someone ten dollars so you must put the negative number there first. 
So next we're going to be on step 3H. We're going to click on the cell C5, loan amount for the present value argument. We're going to leave this as a negative amount because it represents the, uh, the fact that we owe something. And we're going to leave the FV and type boxes completely empty. So we're not worried about a future value and we're not worried about type. Now, in accounting, a future value will be important. So say you have a depreciation of that tractor, and you're going to sell that tractor after three years. You know you're going to depreciate that tractor by $800 a year. Your future value will be whatever's left off that you're going to sell that value for. So future value is for depreciation and those type of items in financial accounting. Uh, but for here, we have a loan amount. The loan amount is going to be zero by the time we pay it off. So we have no future value. And we're going to hit OK here. So what we should see is we have a monthly payment of $186.43. And you can see our formula on this is our payment is a rate divided by 12, our loan term times 12, and a negative amount of our loan amount. So we're going to pay $186 every single month. All right, so we're on to step four here, and we're going to create a total interest formula. So let's go over to cell F5. So again, I'm going to jump straight to it. Now I want to show you something here uh, that's a little bit unique. See, I typed in F5 and went straight through it. But this cell is actually also named that total interest. So here in F5, or the total interest cell, the value is going to be calculated by multiplying the monthly payments by the total number of payments. So we're going to try to figure out how much total interest we're going to pay, how much total principal we're going to pay, and what our total cost is. <clears throat> so here on this cell in step 4A, or 4B, we're going to hit our equal sign. We're going to click on cell C8, which is our payments. And we're going to multiply this by cell C6, our loan term. So let's put in an asterisk and click on cell C6. Our loan term, of course, being five years. So our total interest is going to be 932. I did this a little bit wrong. I haven't finished this formula. So our payments times our loan term. Then we're going to our subtract out. So I made a little mistake here reading through, just reading too quickly. So our payment times our loan term times the amount of payment. So we're going to do times 12 here. And then we need to also subtract out our initial loan amount. So we're going to head and subtract out our cell C5 here. So we have our payments times our loan amount times 12 minus loan amount. So what you should be getting here is you have a total interest that you'll be paying of $1,185.81. So now you've got to figure out how much your total principal you're going to be paying. And so for do this, we're going to select on cell F6. And we're going to hit our equal sign. And we're going to choose our cell C8. So let's go here, our total payments. And <coughs> we're going to multiply this by our cell C6, our loan term. And we're going to multiply our loan term by 12 times 12. So you should be seeing a, 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 the same process here over and over again. And then we're going to subtract out our... Uh, total interest. So we're going to go ahead and subtract out our total interest here. So our final formula should be our payment times our loan term times 12 minus total interest. And so let's go ahead and hit enter. So you can see our total principal, we're going to pay out $10,000. Our total interest, we're going to pay out $1,185. Now, you may be asking yourself, why did I do that whole big formula when I could have just referenced the loan amount? It's because what, this is all interconnected, so we want everything to be updated when we change the amounts. So our next step is going to be to modify and figure out the total cost, which our total cost for this loan is, of course, the total principal we're going to pay plus the total interest we're going to pay. So we're going to come over to F7. We're going to hit our equal sign, and then we're going to type in, uh, click the F5 plus symbol, and F6. So our total cost is total interest plus total principal. 
So for this loan over five years, we're going to pay a total of $11,185.81. Now, from here, the next thing we're going to do is figure out our amortization schedule. Now, for financials, amortization schedule shows you how much you're going to pay uh, each month in both principal and interest. And of course, your the beginning of a loan, your interest is going to be much higher than principal, and as the loan goes, your principal will be much higher than your interest. So to accomplish this task, we're going to jump in and we're going to go click on cell B13. Now again, I'm using the address bar because I want to make sure that I'm on the exact cell that I'm supposed to be on. You could also go through the columns, go to column B, row 13, and click on the cell and see that it says B13. So either way works, but this is how I do it. All right, so on B13, we're going to start with our beginning balance. And so our cell B13 is going to be equal to cell F7. So F7. which is the total cost of the loan. And we're going to hit our enter button. Next, we're going to format this value as an accounting number format. You can see it has a whole bunch of digits that we don't need. We're working with money. So let's go up to our home tab. Let's go over here to the number grouping and we're going to change this from general to accounting. So $11,185.81. Next, we're going to sell Excel C13. So let's go ahead into C13. And the interest for payment is calculated by multiplying the balance in the column B by the rate divided by 12. So we're going to hit our equal sign. We're going to click on cell C13. So C, I'm sorry, I've lost my place. Uh, B13, sorry. And then we're going to open up our put in an asterisk, open up a parentheses, and we're going to multiply this by cell C7. C7, our interest rate, and we're going to divide that interest rate out by our 12 months. So we're looking for our interest rate on any given month. So we're going to start with our beginning balance and our interest rate uh, typed in. And then we're going to format this in the accounting format as well. So home tab, numbers grouping, accounting format. So our interest for the first month, first payment would be $41.95. <clears throat> Next we're going to select on cell D13 and this is the portion uh, that is the payment. So of course we always pay on any payment principal plus interest for our, to get our total payments. So we're going to hit the equal sign which I am on step 6J at this point. So we're going to hit equal sign on cell D13, and this is going to equal the cell C8, which is our initial payment, so cell EC8, our payment, and we're going to subtract out of here cell C13, C13, so our payment minus our interest rate. So our principal payment is going to be $144.48 plus our interest of $41.95 should give us a total payment of $186.43. Okay. Next, we're going to select on cell E13. Uh, as you can see, I'm cell, at cell C E13. And we're going to figure this out by hitting our equal sign. Our total payments are equal to our interest which is cell C13, plus, so plus symbol, cell D13. So you should have something that equals 186.43, and it should match up with our payment of 186.43. If these two numbers are different, then you have made an error here. Now our next step is to figure out how much we owe after we've made this payment. So this is just a simple subtraction. We're going to do our equal sign, our beginning balance, our cell B13, and we're going to subtract out our total payment of cell E13. And hit enter. So after this payment we owe $10,998.38. 
Now, next we're gonna start filling this data in through the rest of this amortization schedule, uh, coming through here through all of our different payments. So we're gonna select sales A13 through A14. A13 through A14. And we're going to drag this down through A72 for 60 full payments. So I'm going to go to the bottom right-hand corner. I'm going to right-click on the green square. And I'm going to drag it all the way down through A72. And we should have 60 individual payments there. So now let's go ahead and start working this, this amortization schedule in. I'm on step 7. Uh, that was step 7A and B. So next we're on step 7C. We're going to select cell B14. So B14. And this second payment is the ending balance of the first payment. So we're going to hit equal symbol. We're going to come up and we're going to select cell F13 and hit enter. So you can see here the beginning balance is always the ending balance of the previous month. And next on cell F13, So what we're going to do next is we're going to copy this formula down for this cell B14 all the way down through our 60 payments. So I'm going to double click on the fill handle in the bottom right corner and what it should do is automatically fill all the way down through the bottom. And you can see this should automatically drop down. This formula is equals F13. This one should equal F14, equals F15, 16, and so forth. So it just moved it down one level but it still equals the previous month's ending balance. All right, so that was step uh, 7F. Uh, that was step 7E. We're next on step 7F. We're gonna select cell C13 through F13. So C13, I'm gonna use my shift and my arrows, and I'm gonna go through F13. We're gonna double click on that fill pointer, and we're going to copy all these formulas down as well. So now we have a nice, easy amortization schedule. You can see in month 23, I uh, pay $26 in interest, $159 in principal, give me a toll payment of 186 and I owe 6897 All the way down until our 60th month, I pay $0.70 cents in interest, $185 in principal, and I owe nothing at the end of that particular month. All right, so let's go ahead and click on Control and Home. And go back up to that cell A1. And we're going to start to build a multiplication and formula set uh, from here. Okay, we are on to step number eight now. We're going to build a multiplication formula and set the order of operations. So we're going to need to jump tabs from our student load tab over to our fees and credit tab. So let's go ahead and jump into fees and credit. And now we're gonna start order, working on creating this particular worksheet. So we're on step 8A, we're gonna click on the fees and credit tab and we're gonna select cell F7. So let's go ahead here and go to F7. And so we're gonna figure out what our total fees are. So from here on F7, we need to credit hours times the number of section times uh, the fees to calculate the total fees for the course. So this fees for this course is $125 for three credit hours, and there's 12 credit sections. So how much fees is going to be there, and how many fees per credit hour? So this is going to be an order of operations. You should remember this a little bit from mathematics class of PEMDAS. Please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Parentheses, expon exponential uh, number multiplication, division, addition, subtraction at the same time. So, and everything works from left to right. So PEMDAS, please excuse my dear Aunt Sally. Parentheses, exponential, multiplication, division, addition, subtraction. Trying to remember that when we're working through this stuff. So C and F7, we're gonna click the equal sign. We're gonna click on cell C7. So let's go here to C7, our total credit hours. And we're gonna type the multiplication, so an asterisk. And from multiplication, we're gonna select on cell D7. So here, D7, and then we're going to multiply this again and click on E7. So multiplication and E7. Now remember that this formula works from left to right. So C7 will be multiplied by 12, 3 times 12. 3 times 12 will then be multiplied by 125, 
giving us a total number of fees. So once we hit enter, we have a total fees of $4,500. Now to figure out our total fees per credit hour, we're gonna come over here and we're gonna do some division. We're gonna hit equal sign and we're gonna click on the cell F7. So let's go F7. And we're gonna divide this out. So let's go ahead and divide and then open up a parentheses. Now remember, anytime you open a parentheses, you must close a parentheses. So we're opening up our parentheses and we're gonna click on cell C7. So C7 times D7. And of course, if you open a parentheses, you must close it, otherwise you're gonna get an error. So let's go ahead and close that. Now, I need to back up just a little bit and get rid of that parentheses because we're also going to multiply this number by the average enrollment of the students. So I'm going to hit the uh, multiplication thing one more time. I'm going to come down here to cell C20. Now, I want this cell to always remain the same as I copy this formula down. I want these two to move down the list, but average enrollment always to remain the same. So I'm going to click on that cell C20 and I'm going to hit my F4 button creating an absolute reference. It's absolutely referenced to column C, absolutely referenced to row 20, so it's absolutely referenced to cell C20. Now, after that, I can close my parentheses and hit enter. Now, if you are working on a laptop, sometimes the laptops have extra keys with extra commands. If you have an FN key, to do the absolute reference, you may have to hit the FN key plus F4 at the same time. Next, we're going to select cells F7 through G7. So let's go F7 and G7. I'm just going to use my shift and arrows. And we're going to copy these down. All right, we're going to format these as currencies. So let's go up here to currency and make sure we are selected as a currency. And set a bottom border to cells F18. Okay, right. let's go here to uh, the bottom right corner to the autofill handle, double click on it, copy it down. Let's double check that we are set to a currency. And then with this selected of cells C set or F7 through G18, we are gonna now put in a bottom border. So let's go ahead and put in a bottom border. So we have everything copied down and a bottom border at the bottom. All right, so we are now on to step nine. We're gonna use a sum if command. Okay, we're gonna be using a sum if command now. Now, a sum if is just an addition formula, but it has a certain criteria that goes along with it. So I want to add things together if they meet the certain criteria that I'm defining. So we're gonna select on cell D26. So let's go find column D, and let's go down to D26 here in the total fees. So I wanna know what the total fees are for the biological sciences. So I'm gonna to have to be able to do a sum, but only if these classes meet the words bio in them. So if it's a bio, I'm gonna figure out how much my total fees are. So I'm gonna sum if it meets the requirements that I'm setting. So I'm gonna select cell D26. I'm gonna click on the math and trigonometry buttons, which is in my formulas tab. And I'm gonna look at math and trigonometry and I'm gonna find my sum if. So let's go down here. This should be in alphabetical order. Now, so my range here is <clears throat> going to be A7 through A18. A7 colon A18. All right. Let's just double check that my range is correct. All right. And we're also going to absolute reference these guys uh, so that they stay together. And we're going to hit the criteria. And we're going to type in the words B-I-O. And then we're going to click on the sum range box. And it's going to be F7 through 
F18. And we're going to absolute reference these guys as well. There we go. All right. We're going to hit OK. And what we should come up with is 13,350 if we did it right. 13,350. And now let's go home and go to the Home tab, Currency, uh, Numbered Grouping. And we're going to change this from a General to a Currency. So total fees for biological science was $13,350. Now I want you to look at the formula I just did here. So we did a sum if, and the area that we're looking for is the A's, so over here, the bios, the FRLs, the IMSs, the PHYs. And if we find the word bio, then I want to look in this column and add up the numbers that correspond on that row. So we have our range that we're looking in, we have our criteria, and we have the range that we're actually calculating. And again, you could have came up here. All right, let's just hit out, enter out of that. That was on the formulas tab, math and trig, the sum if. Here we go, sum if. And the range is the range of cells you want to evaluate. The criteria is the condition. This has to be exact. And the sum range is the actual cells to add together if needs to be. So we're going to go ahead and do that. And next, we're going to go down to foreign languages. Now, we're going to copy this sum if formula down, but we're going to have to make a few different uh, modifications. Because right now, if we copy this down, it's just going to give us the same number of 13,350 over and over again. So to accomplish this, what we're going to do is we're going to click on cell D26. We're going to go to its fill handle in the bottom right corner, and we're going to drag it down. And when this happens, because we absolute referenced, we're going to get the same number over and over again, 13,350. Now, that's because every one of these is referencing the biology department. So we need to come through here and modify these to be the other uh, criteria. So instead of biology, the foreign languages is FRL. Hit enter. For the information management systems, uh, that's IMS, and enter. And for the physical sciences, instead of BIO, we're going to change it to FHY. Now, you may have made a mistake or got an error message if you followed the instructions exactly. So let's go ahead and recreate that error message so we can do the trace error. So here on cell D26, if you copy this down, like it tells you to, and then double click on the foreign languages and change the formula from here, instead of the F formula bar, you're going to get an error message in the top left hand corner. Now all this does is tells you that the formula that you now have in this cell differs from the one before that you just copied. Now it differs because we wanted it to be different. So we can sit here and just choose to um, ignore or uh, have ignore the error. So if you do the drop down radio button, we can choose to ignore error and get ri rid of that message. Now let's go ahead and go in here. If you come up here, IMS, you won't get the error message. So it's a difference of placement between the uh, two. If you edit it in the formula bar, it assumes that you intentionally made that modification. If you edit it from the cell directly, it thinks that maybe you made a mistake and you didn't intentionally do that. So let's go ahead and make those modifications and now we have nice little fees and stuff here. All right, we are now on to step 11 and we're gonna use a sum product and trace an error message. So let's go ahead and select cell E26. So let's go here, E26. And from E26, we're going to click on the Formulas tab, and we're going to choose the Math and Trigonometry Formulas. So let's go here and find in the Functions Library, Math and Trigonometry. Then we're going to choose to Sum Product. So again, it's all in alphabetical order. Let's go ahead and choose Sum Product. So we have different arrays in Sum Product, Array 1, Array 2, and Array 3. Uh, this is the group that which you want to apply, or multiply and then add the components together. All arrays have the exact same dimensions. So let's put this into practice and you'll see what that actually means. So we're going to click on the array box and we're going to select cells C7 through C9. So let's find C7 and let's go through C9. 
Okay. And then we're going to click on the Ray 2. And we're going to choose cell D7 through D9. Cell D7 through D9. And we're going to click on OK. OK. So we have an error message here. And we have a total credit hours of 98 hours with this error message. So let's go ahead and fix this error message. We're going to click on cell E26 and point to its trace error button. So go ahead and here, uh, click on the error message and now what we see here is in cell E26, we have a little green arrow on the top left corner and that tells us that we have an error message. So on our formulas tab, we have this error checking button in the formula auditing group. If you're on 2013, it may say trace error. Uh, you can actually come down here and do the radio button and get that trace error as well. But we're going to go ahead and click on the error checking button and find out exactly what's going on here, why we're having an error. So you can see here in the error checking, the formula omits adjacent cells. Now if I put on the trace precedence, I can see that this formula is using the credit hours and the numbers of sections. But we also have this fees number and the total fees and the fees per credit hour, all these other numbers around. Now for total credit hours, I don't want these other numbers added into it. So this error message is wrong. Uh, we don't have an error in the formula, but Excel has guessed that we are probably omitting something. So we're going to go here and we're going to choose to ignore this error. So let's, I'm going to turn off the trace precedence, remove the arrows, and I'm going to select on the drop down menu the radio button next to my error, and I'm going to choose to ignore the error. Now, next we're going to click on cell E26 and we're going to do another sum product. So let's go to cell E26. Now on E26, we're going to go to the fill handle and we're going to copy it from E26 into E27 through E29. So just down through the rest of these. Now I did by clicking the bottom right corner and clicking and dragging, that was a copy without formatting. So now we're messing up, or the bottom uh, line is messed up and a few other things we'll have to fix. Next, we're going to click on cell E27 and insert function button on the formula bar. So let's go to E27 and we're going to go to the insert function button on the formula bar. And you can see that opens up the uh, array, the sum product that we already have here. So since we copied this formula down, we can now just go in directly and change our arrays a little bit. So in array box one, we're going to choose cell C10 through C12. So let's go here and choose C10 through C12. And in array two, we're going to choose D10 through D12. And hit OK. And again, you can see that we have the error message. We're going to just choose to ignore that error message. There we go. All right, next we're going to go to the information management systems and do the same thing. So let's go ahead, open it up. We're going to go to cell E28. We're going to hit the formula functions bar and we're going to choose, this is for information management system. So array one should be cells C through 13 through C15 and of course D13 through D15. Hit OK. And ignore that error. And do the next one. Functions bar, array 1, we're going to do 16 through 16, the physical sciences. And ignore that error as well. So we should have 98, 69, 96, and 88. All right, so we have moved on to step 13. We're going to insert a current date as a function. Uh, so we're going to select on the cell G30. So I'm just going to jump over here to cell G30. And we're going to type in, uh, <clears throat> we're going to insert a function here. So we're going to hit the equal sign and type in TO. And hit tab. Now you can see here that 
when I typed in TO, it took an automatic guess of what we're wanting to do because I put that equal sign. I now have a little image of the F of X button and I have the today. So we hit tab and that's the one we want. And we're going to choose to press enter. And so our date, 125 2017, is the current date I have. Uh, so we do this because every time now someone opens up this document, it will show the current date, not a previous date or a past date. It will always have the exact date that the document's opened up on. Let's go ahead and hit Control and Home and go back up to A1. And from here, we're going to paste a range of names. So we're going to click on a new sheet button in the Sheet tab area. So we're going to go down here, bottom right, hit the new sheet button. And we're going to type in a little bit of information here. We're going to click on new sheet button and the name sheet range names. We're going to click on cells. We're going to select cell A1. We're going to press the F3. And now we have all of our form names that created that are all inside that name manager box. And from here, we're going to paste these in. Um, All right, so what we're going to do next is we're just going to paste these names out so someone can always reference them. So we've selected cell A1, we've hit the F3 button, you could also come up to the formulas tab, gone into the names manager and gone from here, and we're going to choose to paste the list. So what this does is give the name and the area it's referencing. Now we do need to auto fit these two columns, so I'm going to select columns A and B, and then I'm going to come up here to my home tab. I'm going to go into my format in my cells grouping and I'm going to choose to auto fit column width. So my loan amount references cell student loans tab and cell C5. My loan term references C6 and so forth. Now I do need to rename this sheet from sheet one and I'm going to rename it by double clicking on it and I'm going to call it range names. Okay. Now all we got to do is close it, save it. So let's go ahead and hit save button. I'm going to do one more step and hit file save as. Desktop, top, leave it the same name. Yes, I want to replace it. And now we can go back into here, into our SimNet, upload it and see how we did. So let's choose on upload. Let's find that spreadsheet we just worked on. Logan Phillips Sierra 2. We're going to choose open. Yes, I am ready to submit my file. And hopefully as a professor, I haven't made any stupid mistakes, but there's never a... Uh, a guarantee for this. So let's double check. Uh, got 100%, so I did all right. Uh, so if you follow through along with that, you should be able to get 100% as well. And if you miss anything, just make the modifications and re upload. I hope that helps. If you have any questions, comments, concerns, let me know. I am your professor. I am here to help. Have a very fruitful day, guys.